We are back after a little time away. It is Weather for Weather Geeks on this Monday evening, and we're in the final days of the very, very long month of January. It seems to go on forever, but it's almost in the record book, so I thought I'd take a moment this evening and kind of review some of the numbers for January with only two days left uh, to go in the month. We're going to finish above average temperature-wise, no surprise. That's despite a week of really cold weather. Um, nothing crazy for January, but cold, significant cold, right in the middle of the month from about the 14th through the 21st, we were below freezing that entire time. But ever since then, just like flipping on a light switch, um, it's been a much different pattern, and we've been above average every day since we broke that uh, string of sub-freezing days. Now, today was pretty much at average, about 35 this afternoon. That's uh, half a degree above average. But yeah, for the month, we're going to finish somewhere north of 3 degrees above the average. It's been an unsettled month. We haven't had too many completely dry days. Um, we've had measurable precipitation every Saturday and every Sunday, including over an inch worth of rain at the airport yesterday. This is going to put us at uh, over four inches for the month. This is probably the final number unless we get a trace or a couple of hundredths with a weak disturbance tomorrow night. But we we'll up with uh, four inches and change, about an inch or so above the average. Now that's taking into account rain and melted snow. When it comes to just snowfall, um, of course, it's been kind of a nickel and dime situation here in January. We've totaled about 15.7. That's probably going to be the final number at the airport. That is behind the average. We average about 19, uh, roughly, in terms of a monthly total. Our biggest one-day total, 3.8 back on Friday the uh, 19th. But other than that, you know, a couple of tenths uh, here and there, an inch or so here and there, and it's all added up to about 15. Now, this is more than we had last January, but it's still going to be shy of the average. And of course, we're sharing in this throughout eastern Ohio and western PA. Everyone's behind the average, not only in January, but for the season. At the Youngstown Warren Airport, we've only seen about 55-ish percent of our normal snowfall or average snowfall through today's date. And that number is going to continue to uh, be uh, rather impressive over the next couple of weeks because I don't think much snow is coming through at least the first 10 days, if not almost two weeks of February. So we're going to continue racking up some deficits. You know, we're kind of in this zone through here. We're going to end up probably more like this. Now, again, we've had more snow than last winter. We told you that would happen, but it's still been kind of lame so far. And I think it's going to stay that way probably through the first half of February. Nationwide, no snow out there of any consequence. It's a quiet Monday evening across the country. And we'll zip through Futurecast pretty quickly for the next couple of days because we don't have any significant weather systems heading our way. What we do have is a, a weak front that will approach on Tuesday. The bulk of the day just ho-hum, uneventful, mostly cloudy. And I think some dry air will eat away at a lot of this precipitation as it approaches. Now, around the midday hours, could there be some coatings of snow back towards Toledo, Lima, Sandusky, Mansfield, places like that? Yeah, that's possible. Probably going to see some flakes down to Columbus as well. But the, the air is drier in eastern Ohio and western PA, and I think a lot of this is going to kind of fizzle out as it tries to come east. But nonetheless, tomorrow evening, could there be a renegade sprinkle, quick rain shower, quick... Uh, you know, snowflake or two, yes, but it's nothing that is going to be of any consequence. Everything should just be damp. And then uh, just clouds for Wednesday. And guess what? We'll have more clouds coming our way for a lot of Thursday, but no major weather systems anytime real soon. I think Thursday night, this next front might produce a, uh, a quick sprinkle or a flurry, but that's about it. It's pretty dry forecast for the foreseeable future. And the good news is, you know, it's been a pretty gloomy stretch. Um, back to those foggy days last week. We've had a lot of clouds lately. We're going to have a lot of clouds the next few days, but check out what happens as we head towards the weekend. Groundhog Day is Friday, and there probably will be some clouds around in the morning, but I think the afternoon will feature brighter weather. That will pave the way to a much brighter weekend. Hardly a cloud in the sky for the first weekend of February. Now, it's not going to be a heat wave. We're going to be in the lower 40s Saturday and Sunday, but it's going to feel pretty nice. You know, we're getting into February by the uh, weekend, and that's sun angle season, as I like to call it. In fact, solar spring begins this weekend. That's a three-month period in which we're gaining daylight at the fastest rate. We start noticing the sun's strength a little more as we get into February. And with full sunshine Saturday and Sunday, even though, you know, the temperatures are going to be nothing to write home about, it's going to feel pretty nice outside. But yeah, very little of anything coming our way snow-wise. Again, maybe a flurry tomorrow night, maybe another flurry Thursday night. That's about it. Uh, it this only runs out through the next week. I think we're pretty snow-free for a couple of weeks, probably taking us through at least the 10th of February, perhaps even up to Valentine's Day. Now, I do think the pattern will change beyond that. We can thank the uh, upcoming pattern to this raging Pacific jet stream. Uh, flights, you know, going through this jet stream are way shorter coming from uh, Asia to North America because that's a 200 mile per hour 
tailwind uh, coming across the Pacific. And when we get this jet extension, as we call it, um, this tends to bring unsettled weather to parts of the West Coast, and it floods the North American continent with, of course, Pacific air as opposed to Arctic air. We're not going to see much in the way of a large-scale pattern change until this jet starts to break down and retract a little bit. You'll notice as we roll out about 10 days from now, the jet is not as well organized coming east. That's the beginning of maybe some retraction, pardon me, in the Pacific jet, and that may eventually start changing the pattern as we go towards Valentine's Day and into the second half of February. I do think there will be some colder and perhaps stormy times by then. But until then, yeah, we're in a long midwinter break right here uh, for the next 10 days or so. Uh, well above the average, nothing crazy but at least five degrees, if not 10 or 11 or 12 degrees above the average um, for the foreseeable future. And uh, again, if you're a snow lover, if you like winter weather, if your business depends on plowing snow and taking care of snow, um, you're gonna be hard pressed to find much around our area, probably through that first half of February. I am pretty confident that the second half of February will feature a pattern change. Will it be as cold as we had during mid-January? I'm skeptical of that. But at the very least, we should have more opportunities for cold and snow back half of February as opposed to the front half. We'll do a full February update uh, later this week, uh, tomorrow or Wednesday perhaps, here on Weather for Weather Geeks. We'll kind of uh, go into more detail about uh, the pattern evolution as we head into the final month of meteorological winter. In the meantime, thank you for watching this Monday evening edition of the Valley's Most In-Depth Weather Forecast. I'll see you back here on Tuesday for Weather for Weather Geeks.